efficiency is a big loud word and it gets thrown around a lot. What does it mean when it comes to solar panels? What are the most efficient solar panels out there? Do you actually need them? My name is Tanya and in this video I'll be talking about solar panels efficiency. First, I want to explain what the efficiency or conversion rate of a solar panel really is. Efficiency is how much sunlight a solar panel converts into electricity. Basically, it's a ratio between the power output and the surface of a PV module. You can see on the screen the formula for calculating the efficiency of a panel. Looks pretty straightforward, except you might wonder where 1000 watt per square meter is come from. Basically, it's the irradiance at which solar panels are tested. It should roughly resemble the amount of sunlight a solar panel gets at noon. There are some tricks, though. For example, some manufacturers write cell efficiency instead of module conversion rate. Cell efficiency is always higher because a panel has non-active parts, such as frame and the space between the cells. In the past, there were manufacturers that were trying to exclude the frame from calculation to, you know, boost the efficiency numbers. It's obviously not fair and generally companies don't do it anymore. So how efficient do solar panels get in 2024? Let's look at the few modules with the highest conversion rate. I picked out single glass solar panels for home and not bifacial panels. With bifacial panels, you have to factor in their active backside. In their data sheets, you can see the efficiency at 25 to 26%, but it stands for both sides. While well, you can use those for home, they are filmsier and a bit harder to install if you try to make use of their rear side. Don't confuse the most efficient panels with the most powerful ones. If you are interested in those, we have a separate video on that, and I will suggest you check it out. So, I picked the five most efficient panels, and we will start from the bottom. The first one is Top Haiku 6 from Canadian Solar. The 470 watt variation of this module reaches a 23% conversion rate. Canadian Solar is, as you might guess, Canadian, but the company has Chinese roots and makes most of their panels in China. The next in line is the Maxion 6 solar panel from SunPower. It matches Top Haiku with 23% efficiency. SunPower is an American, one of the oldest in the industry. It has been around since 1985. Their panels are always at the top of the list, like this one, because they stuff their modules with all the latest innovations. The downside is that their panels are always more expensive than the products of their competitors. The next one, Haima X6 Scientist Solar Panel from Longi Solar. The 455 watt variation reaches 23.3 efficiency. Longi Solar is a Chinese company and they have a whole line of variations of these Haima solar panels. For example, there is a Haima Artist Panel, which I have brought up before, which stands out for its design. By the way, if you would like us to make a video on the most beautiful solar panels out there, let me know in the comments, I'd be down for it. The bronze medal in this list goes to AEG, a German company. Their BC Premium solar panel reaches 23.6% efficiency. To achieve it, engineers moved all the contacts to the backside. I think it was LG that popularized this design and now solar companies are trying to replicate it, but making it cheaper as well. The panel looks very nice, but it's a bit hard to find, especially outside of Europe. The second place, which I give away somewhat hesitantly for reasons I will explain later, again goes to SunPower. Its latest model is called Maxion 7. The 445 watt variation reaches 24.1% efficiency. I should point out that SunPower actually doesn't make solar panels themselves anymore, and instead they spun off manufacturing into a company called Maxion Solar Technologies. So if you see these names together, don't be confused. They are at least very close, if not the same thing. Now, when making this video, I actually thought Maxion 7 would be the winner. 
until I came across Neo Star Solar Panel from a company named Ico Solar. I gotta be honest, that was the first time I've ever heard the name, but the matter of fact is that their Neo Star Panel outperforms all the competitors. The 490 watt Neo Star Solar Panel reaches 24.8% efficiency. The gap between this module and the Maxon 7 is pretty big, and I can shake the feeling something is not right here. But still, the data sheet shows the numbers. Ico Solar is a real Chinese company, and they even had a patent dispute with Maxion that is still ongoing. So, thereby, I crown Neostar from Ico Solar as the winner. It might not stay there for too long. This May, Maxion announced an upgraded version of Maxion 7 with a 24.9% conversion rate. So, we've looked at some panels, but how does the difference in the efficiency work in practice? Suppose you have a 400 watt solar panel and its efficiency at 20%. This means that it's 2 square meters in size or about 21.5 square feet. Imagine you bought 15 panels to build a 6 kilowatt solar system for home. The panels are going to take about 30 square meters on your roof or 320 square feet. What if the same panel is 23% efficient? Now the size of a panel is 1.74 square meters or 18.7 square feet. The same 6 kilowatt system will now take 26 square meters or 280 square feet. The more panels you have, the more noticeable the difference becomes. Do you really need your solar panels to be the most efficient? In my opinion, efficiency is a metric that definitely gets oversold a bit. I can understand it. It seems intuitive and the word efficiency is impressive. But really, it becomes a top priority only when you need a lot of energy and you don't have a lot of free space on the sunny side of the roof. Admittedly, this situation comes up pretty often. I would say that often it's a good idea to find a compromise. Look for panels with a conversion rate of at least, say, 21%, but don't overdo it. Trying to get your hands on the most efficient panels can make your system more expensive than you expected it to be. Again, to make the panels convert the sunlight into electricity better, engineers try every trick in a book and it's not cheap to do. Some experts say that we are reaching the limits of a traditional silicon solar cell. This means that there probably won't be any huge jumps from here and it doesn't make sense to wait for a much better thing. The next big step for the industry are perovskite solar cells and eventually panels made from them. I talked about how they are going to be set up in one of our previous videos. Come check it out! But with that, that's all from me on this topic. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm Tanya and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.